الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, where do I begin? Let's call this the reflections on current affairs under the subtitle of Corona virus. Corona virus. Yeah, buddy. Lives have changed. The world has changed. This pandemic slapped humanity on the face like and everybody's like still in the state of trying to recover and get their mind back on track. And it's not happening, it's not happening. We can't even cope, we can't even fathom what has happened and what's gonna happen. We're in a state of utter, utter confusion. Conspiracy theories, um, assumptions, scientific evidence that it is biological war, man-made, naturally made, this and that, lemonade, everything is on the table. Everything is on the table. It's an open buffet. Everybody's picking up whatever they want. Can't even find toilet paper. <laughs> humans, if you <laughs> humans are crazy. We are crazy creatures. Toilet paper, for God's sake, have some, dude. That requires like a long lecture on its own. I could laugh for ages about <laughs> the toilet paper pandemic that we're having. Like people, I mean, what were they doing? I mean, come, I don't, you know, the, the subject is so lowly and related to, you know what, I don't even want to go there. But let me, let me discuss, let me discuss a number of things. SubhanAllah. Uh, this situation really makes us reflect on, on a lot of things. First and foremost, the beauty of Islam and the truthfulness of Islam and that which strikes the fitra of mankind right in that bullseye. Humans always uh, pretend that religious restrictions are too much to handle. They're too difficult to bear. They're uh, inapplicable, you know, this and that. This situation we're living in has forced the world to live to some degree an Islamic lifestyle. Not in the negative sense, no. I don't mean it that we're because we're in a state of what you can call some sort of hallucination or, or craziness, no. But from a perspective of being able to stay away from things that you otherwise claim that you can't live without, guess what? Surprise, you're doing just fine. You're doing just fine, human being. Look at you. You used to make fun of the Muslims that, you know, their women have to cover up and how do they cover up with this niqab prevents the woman from communication and she's blah, blah, blah. All y'all are covered right now. If somebody goes out without a face mask, they'll think he's a lunatic or crazy. You seem to be communicating just fine. Um, dressing up and covering your body in general, you know, another thing that the Muslims are criticized for, specifically their women, well, surprise. Nowadays, the more contact you have with the surfaces, the more prone you are to getting a virus. People are dressing up with suits, like suits, like medical suits and all types of new things that they're putting together and they're walking around in the most awkward fashion, but now it's just fine. People staying away from certain food that otherwise they couldn't stay away from, now they're able to because they want to protect themselves. Social distancing, no mingling and mixing between men and women and da 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 oh we can, how can we do it now? You don't even sit next to your wife, man. <laughs> If your wife got an issue, you put it in some other room and you, she's quarantined in the hospital for two weeks. Either she makes it or she doesn't. Oh, now we're able to stay away from each other. Another surprise. Oh, washing the hands. You Muslims have to wash all the time. You know, ablution and you pray five times a day. Y'all need to calm down. You're overreacting. Oh, I see now washing the hands became the thing. Not even sanitizers, not even this. The main message that the medical professionals are communicating to us is wash your hands for X amount of time. We Muslims have been doing this for some time. Oh, and we don't have to worry about the toilet paper because we already use water as means of cleansing. We are the cleanest people on earth. 
in that sense. Not not denying that some Muslims, unfortunately, don't have the proper hygiene, don't know how to take care of themselves, and they stink. But that's because they're not following the te teachings of Islam, not because Islam in and of itself allows this. In fact, they are in a state of violation of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They're supposed to be clean. The Prophet Muhammad smelled beautiful. He looked beautiful. He dressed beautiful. He was clean in every respect of the word. And I can go on forever. I can go on forever. Look, just look at it as Allah showing mankind that you're weak. We are so weak. They boast and they, they, they brag about their accomplishments and what they're able to do at this country and that country and this government and that government and so on and so forth. But when it boils down to it, everybody's struggling, man. They can't cope with what's going on. They can't cope with what's going on. It's a sign from God about the weakness of human beings. And it's a sign for mankind that atheism is flat out the craziest thing in the world. You know what I've benefited from this uh, lockdown, if we may call it, or working from home or having to stay home longer than, than usual. I've been listening to tens of debates between uh, theists and atheists. And I've come to the conclusion that the atheists are some of the craziest people on earth and the most clueless. They want to defend their nonsense to the point that they can actually argue with you that one plus one does not necessarily equal two. It actually depends on what you mean by one and if the one is it. Any type of gibberish, any type of mumble jumble, philosophical terminology, molecular and atomic, blah, blah, blah. And so they sound sophisticated and now we have to believe that there's no God. In your face, man, the presence of evil is the proof of the presence of good. Because without the presence of both, you cannot, you will not appreciate either. You will not know what's good unless you know evil and vice versa. And that's the sign of God. The presence of this evil in this world is a sign of God. And so think about that. Look at the weakness of humanity right now. How about the concept of death? This is a smack in your face about death and the reality of death and how near it is to each and every one of us. So all those people that were confident they're going to live for X amount of time, now they're afraid to go to the supermarket and touch an item, get coronavirus, and they might die in a couple of weeks. Think about that. Muslims are in a perpetual state of being ready to, to die. Not in that, uh, you know, uh, media uh, propaganda sense that they're running, uh, you know, around blowing themselves up. That's, that's just nonsense. That's wrong. That's flat out wrong. But in terms of knowing that you could die anytime and you're going to meet your Lord, Muslims are ready. And now the people are getting prepared. Parents are having talks with their children that, you know, if something happens, this and that, they're actually now thinking like Muslims think on a regular basis. The Prophet ﷺ had already told us, Remember often the destroyer of all pleasures. So in this dilemma, in this disaster we are actually facing, there, are, there is so much good. There is so much good. And that good is really appreciated mostly by the believers. Only a believer will appreciate the good in everything. Of course, it is natural to hate uh, something that is harmful to us. Uh, we don't curse uh, diseases because they're uh, you know, part of the degree of Allah. But you may hate a disease for the problems that it creates for you and your family and so on and so forth. It's a natural type of hatred. But at the same time, a believer truly appreciates the benefits that come out of these situations. And so we need to find a way to communicate the beauty of Islam in the light of this situation that the humans are facing. Because if you really look at it, Islam had already given solutions for all of that. Look how strict we are in terms of what we eat. The Muslim diet will make it technically impossible for you to get a disease, assuming it came from rats or bats or roaches or snakes or whatever the people eat. Assuming, because we don't know for sure. But at least we know that if that was the case, if that were the case, we don't have to worry about it, because already our diet 
allows us to stay away from these things. Who are the people that are prone to, to, to getting sick and possibly, you know, dying from the coronavirus? Are people that have, uh, that people that smoke, smoking is prohibited in Islam. People that uh, may have a weak immune system, and that is usually the result of not taking care of your body, unless you have some other chronic illness, which we ask Allah to cure. A Muslim is required to eat healthy and a diet, a balanced diet, so that you're ready to fight off these things. If it's about clean, 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 cleaning and cleansing yourself, then you're already in the state of cleaning yourself all the time, because of the way you behave as a Muslim, because of praying five times a day. And so you find that if you follow the teachings of Islam, you are already in the state of preparation, not only to deal with this virus now, but also to deal with what comes after if you were to pass away, because that possibility remains to be there. You may do everything you need to do. You say the adhkar in the morning and the evening, you believe properly in Allah, you, you, know, you, have a, you have everything, but it could be that Allah had a decree for you that it's your time to go. Then at least when we communicate to mankind the beauty of Islam in that light, then they can at least make it to paradise, since this world obviously was not a paradise. It was some sort of hell for them. So the concept of the world being a prison is something that Muslims apply on a regular basis because we know that the life to come is going to be the freedom from that prison. If people understood this, it would be easier for them to deal with the current situations. That's why you find Muslims are the coolest people right now. Go to our supermarket. You will not find what you're seeing in the Western civilized world. You will not see people fighting over toilet paper. You will not see people just cleaning off shelves and, and, and hoarding and taking you know, more than they need. We're reasonable people. We're reasonable people. We rely upon the creator of the heavens and the earth. We understand that it's all in his hands. And we find wisdom in what he legislated. We find wisdom in what he decreed for us. This this situation, which is unprecedented in our lives, I'm 40 years old, never seen anything like this. I mean, I was born in, in the middle of a civil war in Lebanon. I'm, I was used to hearing bullets and bombs and grenades. That is nothing compared to what we're going through right now, at least the way I feel. It has taken the world by storm. Everybody, look at the social media. It's all about corona. It's, it's, it's everywhere. But the Muslims are the most chill people on earth, man. Maybe it's time for you to become a Muslim. And if you're a Muslim, it's time for you to communicate the message of Islam to others. We always want to capitalize on these situations for the good of people. We're not going to get any extra money because we're not looking for it. We're not going to get any material because we're not looking for it. We're looking for the war. But this is the opportunity. So think about it and stay safe. Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.